Hi everybody, my name is David Lundy and I'm an assistant professor in the College of Biomedical Engineering at Taipei Medical University. Today I'm going to be giving you some information about the university, about our programs and to give you some reasons why you may consider applying here. First of all, I think I need to tell you some basics about TMU. We're a private university in Taipei, Taiwan, founded in 1960. And we originally started out by training doctors and nurses. And 60 years later, we, we still do that, but we've expanded a lot uh, to around 6,000 students now. We're still a focused medical university uh, teaching and researching on a whole diverse range of medical sciences uh, and that's at the bachelor's, the master's and the doctoral levels. TMU has six affiliated hospitals which take care of tens of thousands of patients every year and this is intrinsically linked to our student education. With this goal of blending our academic and our clinical applications, with that goal in mind, TMU has been rapidly expanding our translational capabilities this is the, the bench to bedside science. And we have a new translational cancer center, a new biotechnology development building, and a new center for operating uh, the human clinical trials. So for example, right now, it's early 2021, and TMU Hospital's involved in testing some of the, the new COVID-19 vaccine. Back when I was a fresh graduate, when I finished my bachelor's degree, Actually, I had no idea really what I wanted to do and I didn't have like a future career plan. And I just ended up following things which interested me. And I did that all the way through my, my PhD, postdoc, and I'm, I'm still kind of doing it now. So I figure that probably a lot of you will be in the same situation that I was. And I think maybe rather than give you a big long list of colleges and programs, maybe I'm gonna try to tell you some of the healthcare challenges that are facing the world and that might inspire you and to help you think about what you might like to study and maybe where you could become an expert and help out in the future. So the most obvious healthcare challenge right now, obviously, is the COVID-19 pandemic. As you surely know from the news, we need a whole variety of experts to help kind of guide us through this new situation. So we have the doctors and the nurses, they're on the front lines treating patients, but you might have also noticed that we've become, you know, a lot of us have become kind of amateur, armchair epidemiologists this year. So we talk about R0 numbers, and case fatality rates, and troubling new variants. We talk about this with our friends and family nowadays. Epidemiologists are public health experts, and their job is to study how a disease spreads in a population. And they're also expert geneticists. They sequence the virus. They're able to track how it's mutating as it moves around the world. And we also need bioinformaticians and biostatisticians to help kind of make sense of all of that data. There's a huge amount of data that we need to be able to, to go through and understand. And then we need to be able to make models to predict how the different healthcare policies might change or impact the spread. So for example, you know, would it be viable to keep schools open and then just shield the elderly and the vulnerable? You know, there's a whole field of humanities in medicine as well. Things like medical ethics, we need to understand the impact of different healthcare policies. So another example, like countries need to balance, they need to balance people getting maybe infected and dying, but there's also a cost of closing down the country. Children miss school, there's mental health problems, isolation and, and everything else that we're, we're becoming aware of this year. So, you know, people are even now trying to use artificial intelligence. They're integrating big data and machine learning with all of that information to try and predict what the next outbreak might be or where this pandemic is going to go. So if any of that sounds interesting, then, you know, at TMU we've got a lot of postgraduate programs where you can do research that's related to, to these topics and you could become an expert in one of those areas. Another very obvious global problem is our aging population and our rise in chronic diseases. So there's a big need for lots of new medicines, devices and other treatments that are going to be able to help us manage that. So it may surprise you to know that the number one killer in the world is actually cardiovascular disease. So that's heart attacks, strokes. And then that's kind of followed by number two, which is, which is cancer. Um, and we also shouldn't forget the other chronic diseases like asthma, COPD, liver disease, kidney disease. Right? They're extremely common. I'm sure that all of us, we probably know at least one person with at least one of those. 
So, like I said, what we really need is new therapies for the, these diseases. And that might be small molecule drugs, it could be targeted treatments like antibodies or nanomedicine. We also need biomedical engineers. We need people with backgrounds outside of biology, like physics, engineering, and they can help us to make better imaging systems like MRI, CT, PET scanners, maybe sensors that could detect a disease earlier, or, you know, a device, a more compact, affordable dialysis unit for the patients with kidney failure who's waiting to transplant. So again, if you're the type of person who finds that interesting and you might like to work on those things in the future, then you should definitely consider applying. And TMU can provide the infrastructure for helping you kind of research and invent these things, developing them, testing them out, and we even have the capability of running clinical trials and maybe commercializing final products. Studying disease is obviously extremely important, but we, we don't want to forget to also study health. And we know that sleep, nutrition, and exercise they're like the most powerful drugs for presenting, preventing disease that we could ever hope to invent. And it's also, it's really important to understand how these things work, but in a scientific, kind of rigorous manner. Um, we know that diet, for example, it has very powerful effects on our health and on those chronic diseases that I mentioned earlier. And it's also becoming clear that maybe the best diet for one person is probably different to the best diet from another person. We don't really yet know how to how to predict that or how to like prescribe a diet in a meaningful way. If you've ever done an all-nighter before class, and I know I have, um, you'll know for sure that a lack of sleep it dramatically reduces your attention, your focus, your ability to learn and remember. But it also affects things like emotions and decision-making ability. And although we've probably not done much traveling like last year and this year, you'll definitely remember that when you disrupt your circadian rhythm, when you have jet lag, it just makes you feel terrible. And you even catch a cold more easily because lack of sleep weakens your immune system. There's even evidence that the lack of sleep increases your risk of cancer. So at TMU, again, we believe this is very important. We have programs that are studying sleep, learning, memory, and probing into those very fundamental questions, things about human consciousness, cognition, brain function. Um, we do also, of course, want to study how those things go wrong, how they're disrupted in various conditions, um, like mental health problems, depression, bipolar, and then maybe how we could intervene using things like brain stimulation to try and correct those problems. Many of us now, we have these uh, wearable devices, you know, they can track all sorts of different metrics like our heart rate during rest, exercise, sleep, you know, and that's, that's kind of nice to know, and it has some novelty value, but you know, how can we do better? How can we make sure that this can have a real impact on health and disease? Well, some research has actually shown that a smartwatch could predict that you have COVID-19 even before you feel any symptoms, and that's due to the very subtle changes that happen to your heart rate. So now imagine if we had a very powerful wrist sensor and it could measure the salt and the ions in your sweat, or it could measure the changes in hormone levels, or it could continuously monitor your blood sugar, then we could improve health. We could detect diseases earlier, we could monitor our mood, and we would have a better understanding of how our lifestyle, right? So our sleep, our diet, our exercise, our stress level, how do all of those things affect our bodies? In order to do that, yet again, we need these multidisciplinary teams of scientists with training in physics, chemistry, electronics, material science, and of course, we need biology and clinicians to help make that happen. We also need those data scientists to help us make sense of the data, and we need to make sure that it's actionable and it's actually useful to the patient, that they, they get information they're actually able to use to make changes. And at TMU, we have a very active and passionate group of researchers who are working on this wearable technology in, using apps and trying to integrate it in order to help patients. Some research is looking at how we could repair or maybe just outright replace those tissues which are damaged by disease. And we actually already do this in, in many ways, like we have artificial heart valves, we have hip replacements, we have prosthetic limbs, and their job is to replace the dysfunctional parts of our body with materials that are able to do the same job. 
So my own lab, we're trying to do this with heart disease. So, you know, if you have a heart attack, a piece of your heart muscle uh, actually dies, and then you kind of slowly progress into long-term heart failure. What we're trying to do is to use biomedical materials, some tissue engineering and stem cells to try to either delay or hopefully to be able to even reverse that process. Because theoretically, why can't we just grow you a new piece of tissue in the lab and then, and then transplant it? And the same is true for the other organs I mentioned. You know, the brain can be damaged by stroke, the liver can be damaged by obesity, alcohol, drugs. So, you know, if any of this, again, sounds appealing, there's definitely going to be some postgraduate programs that are suitable for you. And finally, if you are a healthcare professional already, then TMU offers an MBA program and we have training in policy and management. And these people are extremely important in healthcare systems because, you know, we need people who are able to make these decisions about policies, where money should be spent, where it should be saved, and we have to make sure that the system is sustainable. And I think to do that, you need the, like, the business side and you also need the clinical side to know what is important for pain. So hopefully some of that has been inspiring and it's been useful. And you might be able to think about studying or researching one of those areas. And you can probably also see that a lot of it actually overlaps and you could come to the same problem, you can approach it from many different angles. And in that case, I would advise you can check our website, you can identify some of the colleges, maybe some of the programs, uh, which are most appropriate. Taiwan is a pretty small island, but it's a really, really great place to live and work. It's very safe, it's very convenient, it's very friendly, has good food as well. And at TMU, we have a, a good mixture of local and international students, and we have international faculty as well. We have all of the usual clubs, the societies, leisure activities that you would expect. So hopefully during your course and your research, you're going to be pretty busy. Hopefully you have the time to experience some of those as well as experiencing some local culture, history, maybe even learning Chinese. So if any of that sounds interesting, then you should definitely consider applying. And the applications, they open normally around November, but you can start planning, working on your application right now. You can check our website for requirements and that might include certification of English. That depends on what your country of origin is, where you studied already. And the final thing that we're, we're often asked is whether there are scholarships. Uh, the answer is yes. The scholarships are available for the most promising international students. So there's scholarships from TMU directly, or there are ones from the Taiwanese government as well. They're very competitive, right, as you can imagine. So basically, the earlier you can start, the better. You can cram right now for your final exams, try to get some summer work experience, right? Brush up your CV, uh, make sure your letters of recommendation are, are really good. So go and make friends with uh, the people who are gonna write those. And you know, you can do all of that to try and improve your chances. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, then please just contact us by any of the methods shown here and we hope to see you soon.